Welcome to the first episode of my new series, Who Watches This? Where I pick a random TV show and see what it's all about. Today's show is Bob Hart's Abishola, which airs on CBS. This is season three, episode five, titled Greasy Badge of Honor. The synopsis reads, an American guy falls in love with a Nigerian nurse. I smell hijinks in the crappy sitcom. The episode opens up with Abishola talking to her son. She is studying for the MCATs to be a doctor. Knock, knock. We're neighboring white people. Bob's mother and I guess sister give Abishola fancy gloves because she's becoming a woman. Then they describe the lady who started the whole glove tradition. Great Grandma Gilbert. Anyway, great-grandma Gilbert would be so proud. Oh, no, she'd hate it. She was old school. You know, women shouldn't vote, black people aren't people, that sort of thing. After telling some racist jokes, Abishola gets invited to a... <gasps> Girls Day! Personally, I don't like these transition shots. It looks like the houses just have stupid art out in front. Love. Believe. Meanwhile. Next, we cut to this joker, who's at work just dropping things on his boots. His boss scolds him, and we find out that Badger from Breaking Bad is on the show. At least he's getting work. Next, we learn that Bob is the boss, and this guy wants to open up an outlet store. Bob gives him the green light. Next, we go to Girl's Day at the spa. The daughter is so woke that she offends the manicurist by assuming she doesn't speak English. Shortly after, Grandma gives us some wisdom. And I've always said, if you don't take a little me time, you'll snap and murder your whole family. You know what's funny? My uncle used to say that all the time before he snapped and murdered his whole family. Miss your Uncle Jerry. Next, we see Abby Shola at work. She can't do her job because her nails are too long. So far, honestly, nobody comes off looking that great in this show. The daughter is so woke she's racist. The grandma isn't a good person, but she's funny. And Abby Shola? She comes off as a no-nonsense, unfun person who's actually kind of a jerk. And I deserve to do something for myself. Don't we all? Yes, but I deserve it more. I work harder than any other nurse on this floor. I work on this floor too. I know. Her coworker tells her she has to insert a catheter in an old man, and we're off to the next scene. Look at that stupid statue in their front yard. Who would buy that? These two guys have a conversation, and we find out that they're cousins. One of them thinks the other is trying to take his job, but really he's not. The jealous cousin gives him soup, and then tells him he put laxatives in it. Nice prank. Oh look, another stupid front yard statue. If I lived in that neighborhood, I would wait until it gets dark out, and then I would kick over one or more letters. Hey girl! Next, woke lady can't help but be racist again. Christina, I'm trying to study. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you study. I'll just do my thing. <laughs> what is that? Oh, it's just a fun way to say thing. Oh, okay. Do your thing. Abishola has no time for a sense of humor. She works too damn hard. In this scene, woke lady talks Abishola out of studying to instead go to brunch and shopping. The girls go out to brunch, get too drunk, and then they play this super accurate montage of what it's really like when girls go out to brunch. They wake up hungover on the couch. I have a feeling I'm about to see more stupid lawn art. I like to imagine that he wakes up every morning, brews his coffee, goes outside, gets his paper, and changes his stupid word art for the day. Next, we see Bob again. So far, we're more than halfway through the show, and he's only been on screen for like 30 seconds. I haven't even seen him love Abi Shola yet. You're just stressed. Look, you left L.A. and Nigeria. We got married. You moved in. You're studying to be a doctor. That's a lot on someone's plate. It was only a matter of time before you... <clears throat> I'm never going to drink again. Ah, uh, come on. 
At least cut loose once a year, just so I can take care of you. I spoke too soon. Abishola complains about her hangover and tries to blame her drinking on Bob, even though he had absolutely nothing to do with it. He's barely in this episode. Next, we have these two in a car, and he reveals his plan to sabotage his cousin. He's going to buy donuts and bring them to the meeting, so the boss will be thinking about eating them the whole time and not pay attention. Genius. They are for torpedoing my cousin. No matter what Kofo says in his presentation, all Mr. Wheeler will be thinking is, when can he have a Boston cream? His favorite. <laughs> yes! <laughs> At a certain point, I will slide the box over to Mr. Wheeler. As we leave, he will say, great job, Goodwin, and pat me on the shoulder, leaving a greasy badge of honor. That's the name of the episode. We find out he's been double-crossed by his cousin, and Badger is really driving him out to the middle of nowhere so he can't interfere with the meeting. We cut to the meeting, and the scene ends in like 10 seconds. We don't even see the pitch. He's just about to start, and it cuts away. It seemed to me like this was a major plot point of this episode, but oh well, fuck it. Next scene. Cut to Abishola riding the bus. During the ride, she insults her friend for being simple and poor. Another Abishola insult. Abishola arrives at her family's house for dinner, and feels ashamed of her financial status because she can afford to buy fake nails and use paper towels to clean up a spill. What the fuck? Someone put it on the roof now? It was me. <laughs> Next, Abishola asks her son about some weird charges on her debit card. What is this extra charge on your debit card? That's just bang bros, mom. I wanted to see some titties. She warns her son never to go to brunch and then gets busted by a woke lady. Never skip breakfast. Yes, mom. Skipping breakfast can only lead to one thing, brunch. So, do you want to study? Uh, I would, but I have a previous engagement. Didn't you hear me honking? It's mimosa time, bitch. <laughs> what did she say? Nothing, remember, no brunch. And then it just ends. That's it. Thanks, Chuck Lorre. So what happened in this episode? Avi Shola didn't study. Instead, she went for pedicures, brunch, and shopping. She insulted her coworker and her friend and didn't apologize to either. Then went to brunch again. <clears throat> Bob was in the show for about 90 seconds and had no story arc whatsoever. The subplot with the cousins added nothing. Why does Bob even heart Avi Shola? I have no idea and I watched the entire episode. She's not fun, she's mean, insulting, dishonest, but damn it, she works hard. I didn't really have high hopes since it's from CVS and specifically Chuck Lorre, but honestly, it was way worse than I expected. It seemed incomplete. I mean, it wasn't funny at all, but it didn't even seem finished. I have only one question left. Who watches this? I don't know.